Um, I'm Christopher. I'm with the Fraunhofer uh, Institute for Solar Energy Systems, and uh, we are doing hydrogen for now 30 years, always with the idea in mind that uh, once when the renewables uh, are getting big, um, hydrogen will become important. Um, I want to uh, uh, shed some light on the German situation, um, as uh, since we have a lot of activities now as well. Um, here you see um, in June last year, also Germany released its hyd national hydrogen strategy. It has a lot of, uh, of individual points, but generally speaking, it's all about ramping up the production capacity for uh, large scale hydrogen uh, production uh, to make use of it in the various sectors. Uh, but it's mostly on electrolysis and uh, uh, fuel cells in the mobility sector and also the sector coupling topics um, to, to keep their grid stable. Um, we as Fraunhofer, we um, are supporting, uh, accompanying uh, this process. Um, next to the universities, uh, you might know that in Germany we have four big uh, science uh, research and technology organizations. It's Helmholtz, Leibniz and Max Planck. And you see uh, Fraunhofer is on the very applied research side. So we want to make things happen and realize. Um, so that's our mission. In total, we have about 100,000 scientists and engineers in the, in the four um, RTOs. And uh, so that's kind of a, a strong backbone for the German economy as well. Uh, in Fraunhofer, uh, we went through a strategic uh, process uh, the year before last year, and we singled out the, the seven most important uh, strategic research fields um, like quantum technologies and uh, artificial intelligence. I mean, this is nothing new, but also hydrogen technology is one of the big seven, as we call it, um, uh, because this will be now a game changer. I mean, that's obvious. Where are we in Germany? So you see here the uh, power production in Germany in April 2010. Um, you see in red, this is the nuclear um, band. Uh, we at that time had 17 nuclear power plants uh, accompanied by uh, brown coal, which is this band, uh, black coal uh, in black, and in orange, this is natural gas. And a little bit of wind and the peaks are a bit of solar. This was like 10 years ago. The same uh, April of last year looked like this. As you can see, nuclear melted down to seven nuclear power plants um, active. Uh, the seven will be switched off next year. So we will be completely without nuclear power plants. Uh, lignite also um, is, is less than half as compared to 10 years ago. But you see here, this is wind power generation and solar on top. So roughly we're approaching uh, like 50% of renewables in the electricity sector in Germany. So this is uh, certainly good news since we're not blessed with uh, neither wind nor um, solar, but still it's possible for a highly industrialized country to have 50%. Um, but of course we want more. Um, what you see here is um, the, the four major uh, energy supplying sectors, which is low temperature heat. Um, as I said, we have minus temperatures at the moment. It's mostly heating houses, uh, process heat for high temperature processes like steel. Uh, transport is obvious and, uh, and the electricity sector. And even this is kind of the, the uh, critical side. Even if we have 100% renewables, we only have like uh, 20, 25% of our uh, final energy consumption uh, completely uh, defossilized. So therefore we have to tackle the other sectors like transport, high and low temperature heat. And uh, this means we have to transfer the electrons to molecules, the green molecules at a certain um, stage in the process chain. And uh, well, let's put it this way, right now we have in our energy services, 80% uh, of the energy services are molecular based by coal um, or oil for transport and of course, uh, natural gas. So but this is uh, why uh, and hydrogen is kicking in. Now um, we have a, a kind of since last year, a different situation because uh, the greenhouse gas neutrality, this is kind of a new thing, so to speak, because all 
nations um, after COP21 had like 95% or a 90% targets. Now 75 states already are committed to net zero emissions in 2050, which is in 30 years. And uh, uh, the, the 75 states, they account for half of the GDP globally. Um, 30, more than 30 countries have released net, uh, hydrogen strategies. So you see the link. Uh, so net zero does not, cannot happen without uh, hydrogen. Um, also, if you, if you add up all the national hydrogen strategies, uh, just for governmental uh, purposes, uh, $70 billion are being allocated for uh, in the next decade. And right now, there is a total capacity of 17 gigawatt electrolyzer capacity, which globally, um, as a sum, uh, are under development somehow in the whatever investment phase or so. But it's it's huge. I mean, we'll we'll see really a big uh, impact of electrolyzers in the um, in the energy sectors. But the major difference is uh, it doesn't look like a lot. But from 95 as to the very right to 100% CO2 reduction. This is a huge step and I will quantify this huge step in a minute. So what, what does it mean? Last year, Germany had an overall uh, consumption of, uh, well, it's Corona uh, corrected. It would have been something like 600 terawatt hours. This is the, um, the power consumption only. And uh, if we extrapolate, so the, the 55 or, or let's say the, the 95 uh, re percent reduction target for 2050 is always the left bar uh, for 2030, 2040 and 2050. But just the 5% from 95 to 100% means that you have to, um, uh, im I mean, you have to have much more efforts in, in the, power, consum uh, in the power consumption, increasing the capacity of both um, uh, wind and solar, uh, which means that in 2050 in the reference, and this is the, the cost optimized scenario, we will have an electricity consumption of roughly 1600 terawatt hours. So it's, uh, it's, it's close to three times as much as we have today. So this is uh, increasing uh, dramatically. How will that happen? Of course, it can only happen uh, with an increase of solar and wind. Um, so instead of this is the 95% scenario, uh, doubling the uh, um, amount of uh, PV and uh, wind, uh, we have to triple it somehow. Today we have 115 gigawatt uh, wind and PV installed uh, in, in a decade, which, well, 10 years from now, we need another 230 gigawatt installations so this um, in order to reach the 100 percent targets in 2050 which is here here we need in total uh, like 750 gigawatt installed uh, just in germany so this is tremendous <laughs> what does it mean for hydrogen uh, this is the uh, the scenarios again 95 and 100 percent in germany we would need roughly uh, 80 gigawatt electrolyzer capacity in order to meet the targets. Once again, this is uh, according our um, energy system modelings, this is the reference scenario, which is the least cost approach. You can always spend more money, but this is uh, the best case, uh, 80 gigawatt installed uh, electrolyzer. So I guess there are electrolyzer companies in the audience. Um, this is, I guess, good news. Um, where do we need the hydrogen? Um, in Germany, we need just for the steel uh, uh, defossilization, like 2 million tons per annum of hydrogen, which is roughly like 20 gigawatts only for the defossilization of the steel sector. Refineries, um, like 700 million tons in high temperature heat. It depends how you quantify, but it's another like 6 million tons. Once again, this is to, um, only for Germany and the sectors, uh, the industrial sectors. On top, of course, we need uh, hydrogen for the transport sector, public transport, uh, private transport, and, and, um, and, and of course, uh, once it comes to ships and airplanes, we need, uh, uh, I mean, the longer chain molecules. So this gives an, like a perspective as to where we are and where we want to go. Um, this is, 
the energy system of the future. We need advanced products uh, from hydrogen based molecules. Um, because right now, um, as I singled out, 80% of the energy services are based on molecules uh, right now. And we have to replace part of such molecules. Hydrogen is fine, but for a lot, for chemicals, for example, what you see here, for the polymers, uh, we need also sustainable uh, molecules, which are not based on fossil energy sources, but uh, on syn fuels somehow. So in the future, of course, our sustainable feedstock will be green electrons, but by whatever you have, um, even, uh, I mean, biomass and, and uh, solar wind, of course, hydro, whatever is available, then uh, you split the water, have the green uh, hydrogen, you always need carbon to have the longer chain molecules. So we do not decarbonize our energy system, we defossilize the energy system. Uh, we need nitrogen for the ammonia route, uh, but nitrogen, well, it's like 80% in the air. So that's an easy one. So then you have the, the conversion processes. Um, you start with like methanol as a, as a basic molecule, but you, you also need up to do some upgrading to longer chain uh, chemicals and uh, uh, whatever you need in the chemical sector and the fuel sector. Um, and of course, fertilizer and other energy carriers this has to be synthesized. So this is the overall value chain uh, next to the, just uh, the production of hydrogen. All these conversion steps are needed. Um, it's, it's of course uh, better you have such conversion steps, the, the closer uh, to the source of, of uh, green molecules as possible. So this is why Neom, for example, is not only producing hydrogen, but also um, uh, ammonia and maybe also carbon molecules in the, in the longer um, chain. So in Germany, what, what are the scenarios here? Once again, we have the reference scenario 95 and 100. Um, and uh, so the, if you go from 95 to 100, again, this, this is squeezing uh, the envelope quite a bit. Um, roughly speaking, we need uh, between eight, 600 and 800 terawatt hours of um, uh, synthetic chemical energy carriers based on renewables in Germany. So huge numbers, um, but once again, this is the, the, the reference scenario. Um, all other scenarios, if you, if you make like boundary conditions uh, for a certain technology, um, if you want to have more value, uh, proposition in, in your own country, then it, it's getting more expensive and uh, you might need more energy. But roughly, if you if you memorize this number between six and 800 terawatt hours of synthesized um, uh, um, chemical energy carriers are needed. Uh, so this is uh, hydrogen, um, it's longer chain molecules, all that six to 800 terawatt hours in Germ Germany only. And of course, we have a big debate uh, which part, portion of it, it comes from external sources outside of Germany. And um, I mean, most studies say, um, between, well, you can say in, in a corridor between 50 and 90 percent of hydrogen and hydrogen products will be imported from external sources. So this is, of course, an invitation for the MENA region. And Cornelius, of course, uh, knows that, um, that uh, Germany will always be an importer for, of, hydro, uh, of energy carriers, hydrogen and longer chain molecules. So therefore, we have to have a deep look into um, the transport sector of uh, both uh, liquid and gases energy carriers. Um, I did the, uh, the math of uh, pipelines versus DC power earth lines as we have it in Germany, the Südlink, uh, which is connecting northern Germany uh, wind power plants with the south Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg. Um, so this is an initiative called European Hydrogen Backbone. Um, so the idea is to develop um, in the next decade uh, close to 7000 kilometers of pure, pure hydrogen pipelines um, to connect all the, uh, the, I mean, the sweet spots in the very south in the Mediterranean countries and the Iberian Peninsula with uh, central and northern uh, uh, Europe. And um, the, the, the costs of, uh, I mean, the good news is that roughly like 75% of the 
existing pipeline uh, system can be rededicated uh, to 100% um, 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 uh, hydrogen. So that doesn't cost too much if you have to build it newly. So you roughly say like 3 million per kilometer. Uh, that's a lot. But if you do DC earth lines, um, then you need like 12 million uh, euros per kilometer. This is the actual cost of the suit link. Uh, which is like four times as much. On the other hand, the transport capacity, depending on the pressure level, but uh, let's stick with this number, 30 gigawatt trans, uh, transport capacity you have with the uh, hydrogen tra transport, a 48 inch um, pipeline as compared to, in this case, two point uh, times two gigawatt in the suit link. Again, this is three times less transport capacity with uh, DC power. Uh, but four times the cost. Um, I don't want to talk that down. Of course, it's, it's always nice to, to transport electrons and you have to uh, transport the electrons. But um, this is a very a big uh, pro for the transport of uh, hydrogen in pipelines. And of course, on the, on the uh, longer um, paths, you need uh, liquefied um, energy carriers like liquid uh, hydrogen or ammonia or um, um, methanol on the other side. And this will be uh, based on ship transport. Um, again, so this is, uh, has to be discussed also with uh, the DII uh, region, with the MENA region, um, which pipelines are suited. Uh, for example, here through, through Italy. Italy is ramping up its hydrogen activities as well. And of course, from the Southeast, um, there is also um, ideas and activities to have 100% hydrogen pipeline to Central Europe. So this is uh, on, the, on the longer uh, scale, but even in the short scale, in the, um, here we have a region which um, in the North Rhine-Westphalia, which is rededicating uh, like 800 kilometers uh, towards 100% hydrogen in the next uh, 10 years. So this is a kind of a, a quick uh, picture as to where we are in Germany. Um, there's a high level of dedication by the national, by the government. Um, so we want to uh, invest like uh, in total 9 billion euros in the next like uh, three to five years at the most. Um, in Germany, uh, well, it will start with five gigawatt and I'm very sure it will be a lot more. In the long term, as I said, we need like 80 gigawatt of electrolyzer capacity in Germany. So with this, again, I would like to thank you. It was just a quick snapshot as to where we are in Germany. And uh, I wish you a very good conference. I, I, would, I would love to be with you today. But um, yeah, so this is the world of today. So thanks again. Well, thank you so much, Christopher.